Champion Life Church. How we doing today? Oh, you got to do a little better than that. You all champions, right? Where everyone could be a champion. Champion Life Church, how y'all doing today? Don't you just pastor, Pastor Larry. Can we give it up for Pastor Larry, Pastor Kim? Come on, you got to roar a little louder for them. You know, they pray for you. They work hard for you. They lay their lives down so that you can encounter Jesus every week. Pastor Larry, I honor you. Pastor Kim, we love you so much. Thank you so much for your generous hearts. I've never come into a church before and had somebody give me a switchblade. <laughs> I like this church. Come on, somebody. But, uh, yeah, look at that. Everybody got their switchblade. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. <laughs> I like it. Y'all are a little wild. Come on. <laughs> But that just shows the generous heart of this church. You know, Pastor Larry setting this faith goal of 125,000. Y'all are radical Jesus followers carrying your King James switchblades. All right. Anybody? A little T-bone reference for the old school rap, rap people in here. All right. Hey, we're going to have a great time today. Y'all ready to have a good time? When Jesus shows up, everything changes. And so can we just have an expectation in our hearts? That Jesus is coming in the house today. He's already here, by the way. But uh, let's, just, let's just expect to encounter him. I'm coming. I still got the red dust of Africa in my throat, as you can hear. I'm coming fresh off the plane on Wednesday, full of fire, excited to preach the matchless gospel of Jesus. Are you excited to be here today? Because it's going to go a little better if you help me preach this thing. Can you help me preach this thing? Come on. Uh, can I share just a little story from Africa before we get started in the Word? You know, I just came back from Nakuru, Kenya. I was there for a month. Uh, I'll show you a picture of my family while I'm talking about this. My wife uh, stayed home with 10 kids by herself, so let me just put the credit where credit is due. Uh, she did all the real work, and I just got to go party in Africa. <laughs> but uh, this is my family, and uh, we're all in this mission together, and so thankful for that. But um, she's getting a little rest today, so I got the kids, and we're here, and uh, we thank you for letting us be a part of the family today, part of the house. But I was in Nakuru, Kenya, and I just have to share this story because, you know, when we serve Jesus, oftentimes, especially when we go among the unreached, Jesus has a way of transforming our hearts and our lives. I think that one of the, that, that little deaf girl with the, with the pink jab on that was up there, I, I think that was a Champion Life Church member, if I'm not mistaken, that prayed for her. Five deaf ears came open in a row in Dar Salaam, Tanzania. When we get serious about the mission of Jesus, he shows up and does things that go beyond our wildest dreams. Amen? So I just came back from Nakuru. I was praying for this young man. He actually was in the healing line, and he fell over and started manifesting an unclean spirit. So we carried him into our VIP section. It's the freedom tent. It's a little tent back behind the stage. And uh, there were six people trying to wrestle with this, this demonized man. And so I just went over to kind of lend a little support. Long story short, the demons were trying to protect something in his stomach. So me and a friend rolled him over and we laid his, our hands on his stomach, started taking authority in Jesus' name. And I realized there were some, some golf ball-sized lumps in his stomach. So we took authority in Jesus' name. What is your name, devil? The devil says his name is cancer, and there's seven of them. And so we bind down cancer in Jesus' name. And you know, when that, when that man got set free from those demons, all those lumps went away. To the glory of Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He's a lover of Jesus. There's a picture of, of him up here. His name is Michael. Michael, you can see he's holding his stomach. I think he's still kind of in disbelief. Like, did Jesus really just <laughs> do that? And uh, Jesus touched his life so significantly. And so this is just one story of thousands of stories that happened this past year in Africa. But my, my hope today is that you would be filled and inspired with hope for the impact you can make in Beaver County, for the impact you can make in Pennsylvania, for the impact you can make to the outer parts of the earth. Amen? So I want to I talk to you today about the one who is anointed with power. Can we talk about that? Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, we're talking about the one who is anointed with power. Yeah, there you go. Talk to your other neighbor, the one you really wanted to talk to now. Say, the one who is anointed with power. Come on, boys. This is your chance. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll uh, invite the Holy Spirit to be the teacher. We welcome you in this place. Spirit of the living God. 
fall fresh on me. I pray that you would anoint me to teach your word, that you would anoint me with your power, that this would be more than just a message of words, but one of power. In Jesus' name, amen. As Pastor Larry said, I was a Beaver County boy, and my, my grandparents actually were kind of out in the country. And so when I, was, when I was first growing up, when I was like 8, 9, 10, we were downtown Butler, and my, my grandparents lived out in the country. So we would go out and visit them, and they always had, you know, cows and horses and all this. And these big animals were put behind this small wire fence. So when we were, when we were kids, we used to go over to the house, and my dad taught me this game. Uh, who wants to touch the electric fence? <laughs> yeah, I know there's some Beaver County boys and girls who play that game in here. Can I get a witness? I usually have to explain this in Africa a little bit, but this is, y'all understand. I'm speaking your language here. So, you know, there's this, this amazing game. It kind of like, it feels sort of bad, but sort of really good at the same time. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay. So, so when, we're, when we're here and we're, we're at this fence, there's always that one kid that didn't quite want to touch the fence. Are you with me? So I'm trying to ex explain to you. When we talk about anointed with power, I'm trying to help you understand this idea of being anointed with power. I love to play this game because I was a little bit of a troublemaker. So I would be like, hey, kid, come here. I want to tell you something. You ever do this? And you grab a hold of the electric fence and you grab a hold of the kid and the power leaves the electric fence, comes into my body, goes into his body. This is just, everybody's having a good time. <laughs> because I was anointed with power and he received his anointing in Jesus' name. <laughs> Actually, that was more in Seth's name. But, <laughs> but, you know, when we talk about anointing, when we talk about power, we need to understand what we're talking about. You ever hugged a woman who had really strong perfume before? And then you walk around with like, I smell good now. Come on. You shake somebody's hand who came out of the bathroom, and you're like, I hope that's because they washed their hands. <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> Am I the only one? Okay, you, you dap somebody up who just put lotion on their skin, and you get kind of greasy, and then you're like, oh, coconut. Okay, that's all right. Lavender. That smells good. That's what it is to be anointed. So when we talk about being anointed with power, it's being soaked, being saturated, coming and having an encounter with the power of God and, and having that power transfer. To, come on, can I get a witness in the house? Is there anybody that's feeling this word today? Having that power transfer from God to us, to the people that we touch in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you today about the one who's anointed with power. Why can this little tiny wire hold back such a massive animal? It's insignificant. It's small. But when that wire touches the currency of electricity, all of a sudden, boom, it has the power to hold back a massive animal. And I just want to submit to you today that if you would take your little life, your little what seems to be insignificant life, and you'll tap it into the power source of Jesus, if you'll tap it into the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, if you'll tie into the word of God, if you'll tie into the person, of Jesus. Now all of a sudden your little life becomes one that is anointed with power. Amen. Are you ready to receive this word today? Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on. You got to preach with me. I'm ready. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to release something. Are you ready to receive it? Say amen. amen. Are you ready to receive it? Say amen. 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 Let's talk about the one who's anointed with power. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19. But before I go there, I want to talk to you a little bit about the backdrop of Luke chapter 4. This is Jesus in his hometown, Nazareth. You know, I'm kind of coming back to Beaver County today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and Jesus is here in Luke chapter 4 in his hometown of Nazareth. But before he goes there, we, we meet Jesus in Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, 21 says this. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my son who I love. With you I'm well pleased. What a powerful moment. Jesus goes into the waters of baptism. He's not a sinner, but he goes into the baptism of repentance to identify with sinful man out of obedience to the Father. When this happened... Heaven opens up, and the Spirit of God descends on him in bodily form like a dove and shines down on Jesus. 
powerful. And then the voice of God thunders, this is my son who I love. With him I'm well pleased. And what a, what a powerful moment. And we know actually from the book of John, if you look at John chapter 1, verse 33, that from this day forward, the Spirit of God remained on Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 33 says this. I would not have known him, this is John the Baptist, except the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man who you see the Spirit come down on and remain on is the one who will baptize in the Holy Spirit. What a powerful picture that Jesus carried the presence and the power of God from that day forward. He was anointed. The Spirit of God shined down and glowed upon him, came in the form of a dove, and then remained on Jesus. And so Jesus lived fully God and fully man, able to be the perfect example of what it looks like to have a life fully surrendered to the Father's assignment. Amen? Jesus had a God card. You have a credit card, right? If you take out that credit card and you swipe it, there's money power in that, right? You can start buying stuff, shoes start coming on your feet, clothes on your back, paying your bills, right? But if you keep that card in your pocket, you still have all that money in the bank, all right? But you're keeping it in the pocket. Jesus veiled his divinity. This isn't a perfect illustration, but he, he was still fully God, but he veiled his divinity, he didn't pull out his God card. He lived as a man so he could die as a man so that he could pay the price for the sins of all mankind. And so he also performed his miracles as a man, anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit, anointed with the spirit of the living God that descended upon him and remained on him. This is good news for somebody in the house living in Beaver County 2024. I'm coming at you today. Are you ready to receive it? Say Amen. And so Jesus had the Spirit of God come upon him and remain on him. And then here's the thing. Immediately after this, he was led into the wilderness. What? <laughs> I mean, he did start his public ministry, but before that, there was a pit stop called the wilderness. He fasted 40 days, 40 nights. The devil came and tempted him. You know, Jesus was tempted in every way that you've been tempted. And yet he was without sin. Why? Because in the wilderness, he showed us. It is written. It is written. He lived by the word of God. He lived by the empowerment of the spirit of God. So when the devil came after him, it's not a coincidence that the devil came at the source of what God spoke over him. The promise that God spoke over him is, you are my son who I love. With you, I'm well pleased. If you really are the son of God, the stone and make it into bread. You see what happens? You receive your calling. You receive your promise. And the enemy comes at you right at the source of your promise. He comes with a lie to try to trick you into thinking God didn't really mean it. And I'm here to release some good news to somebody today that the one who is anointed with power has sent me to preach the matchless gospel of Jesus so that you can become the one who is anointed with power. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, wake up, church people. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I'm here to deliver good news today for the one who feels far from God, for the one who feels dry and weary, for the one who feels like I had a call, but I walked away from it. I'm here for the one who feels like I'm anointed with power, but I want a little bit more. I'm here to preach the gospel and it's for everyone. Amen. So I'm here to preach about the one who's anointed with power. When we surrender to Jesus in every area of our life, everything begins to change. Jesus is the one who's anointed with power. If you didn't catch that already, let me just make an announcement. My first point is Jesus is the one who's anointed with power. And now we can go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. How many of y'all know it's, it's hardest to preach in your own hometown? Why do you think I go to Africa? That's my Capernaum. <laughs> That's my miracle land. Come on. <laughs> Beaver County. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's hardest to preach among your friends and family. Sometimes you're most rejected among those who know you the best as the little carpenter boy. Amen? And so what I'm here to share with you today is Jesus still preached the gospel in his hometown. He didn't let the whether people accepted it or not, you know, sway him from doing what he was called to do. He came preaching this message. Luke chapter 4. 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. 
He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And they wanted to take Jesus and throw him out of the town and throw him off the cliff. And they didn't want any part of who Jesus was because he says, today this is, this is fulfilled in your hearing. I am the one who's anointed with power. I am the Messiah. I have come to take away the sins of the world. And so Jesus preaches this message, and this is what Jesus is all about. He's preaching the good news to the poor. Jesus came healing the sick. He came saying to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. Who are you to say you can forgive sins? Oh, what's easier to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? So I say, get up and walk. He said to the mutant deaf spirit, come out of that boy. And it had to obey because Jesus came to release people from captivity. He came to Zacchaeus and he said, come down from that tree. I'm going to your house today because he came to free people from greed and materialism and to make them generous so that they'll give four times away what they had. Jesus came to the demonized man that had at least 2,000 demons in him and said, get out of him and go into the little pigs. And they ran down the lake and they drowned because Jesus has all dominion, all authority, and all power. And he has made a public spectacle of the enemy. Amen? Amen. He has taken the curses and nailed them to the cross. And now we are free in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. We are free. Freely you have received, now freely give. See, Jesus came healing the sick. He came casting out demons. He came raising the dead. He came as the one anointed with power. Can I get a witness? Y'all know this Jesus? You know who he is? He's good. He's the one anointed with power. And, you know, Jesus was actually reading here from Isaiah chapter 61. So if you turn to your Old Testament, Jesus was reading from Isaiah 61. And verse 1 and 2 is going to sound real familiar to you. But then more than likely, he probably read verse 3 and 4 as well. So I want to share a little bit about that with you too because it says this in Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. That's verse 1 and 2. And then the last part of verse 2. Check this out. To comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion. That's the church. He wants to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who are grieving. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord. Who will? The ones who are in mourning. The ones who are in ashes. The ones who are in despair. When he picks you up out of that despair and he dusts off the ashes and he makes something beautiful. When he he takes your mourning and he pours out his oil of gladness over it. When he takes that cloak of despair off of you and wraps you in a garment of praise. They will become oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild ancient ruins. They will restore places long devastated. And they will be the ones that renew cities that have been devastated for generations. Come on, I'm here to talk to the ones in ashes today. I'm here to talk to the ones in mourning today. I'm here to talk to the ones in despair today. You will be called an oak of righteousness for the display of his splendor. When he's through with you, all the world will see that he is God. And he is good. And he has restored you. And he has pulled you up out of your ashes. Cancer might have devastated you. The loss of a baby might have devastated you. Family and friends rejecting you might have your heart trampled on the floor. But Jesus picks you up out of the miry clay, and he says, I'm making something beautiful out of the ashes. I'm I'm pouring out my oil of gladness right here in the midst of your mourning and your sorrow. I will wrap you in a garment of praise. And when you lift your hands in praise before all the world to see and all the devils to be put on notice... They become a public spectacle. Oh, look at what our God can do. He is a God that brings freedom. He's a God that brings love. He's a God that brings hope. He's a God who, who leads us to him by his kindness. We come into repentance. I'm here today to talk to somebody. Somebody who's felt like God's given up on you. You know, Jesus was led into the wilderness before he was launched into his public ministry. Some of you are just in the preparation season to be launched into what God has for you. Hold on. I used to go water skiing when I was a kid. You have to hold on. 
just when you think you're going to drown, just lean back and hold on. Amen. You pop up out all, on top of the water all of a sudden, and it's like you're walking on water. As you go through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil. He's preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He's leading you. Hold on to Jesus. Point number two, the one who is anointed with power is contagious. That's got to be some good news. You know, being contagious isn't always good, but I like it when Jesus is infectious. <laughs> Can I just infect you with the anointing of the power of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the kindness of God? Can I just release a little hope into your heart today? Can I just ask the Lord to just splash his living water on you, that the blood of Jesus would just run through the aisles? Amen? Anybody want to receive it? Say Amen. What you give agreement to, you welcome into your life. You open up into your life. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the one who's anointed with power. The one who's anointed with power is contagious. It says this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He called his 12 disciples and gave him authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. How many? Every. How many? Every. every disease and sickness. That's amazing. You guys have a chief of police, right? Or maybe a sheriff, sheriff, deputy sheriff, chief of police. When that chief of police leaves, he can what? Eputize somebody and give him authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples. Amen? You have been given authority. You have been, you have been stuck with the badge of Christ's authority in you to say, go out and heal the sick. Go out and raise the dead. Here's the instructions. You want to hear your job description as a follower of Jesus? Are you ready? Say amen. amen. says this in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. As you go, he's assuming you're going to go. You're not going to sit. He doesn't say as you sit. He doesn't say sit ye. Sit ye. He says go ye. Amen. We've got to be a go ye church. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Now freely give. I was in Mombasa, Kenya, and there was a, a great outreach we had at a methadone clinic. And at first, everybody was cussing us and just yelling at us, get out of here. We don't want you here. We want food. We want money. And we said, we don't have money, but what we have, we're about to give you. <laughs> Hold on. So I got on the microphone. I said to my team, they kind of wanted to leave, but I was like, give me a microphone. <laughs> so I got on the microphone and started binding down these spirits. All of a sudden, the atmosphere shifted. And believe me, I don't have that kind of power, but Jesus does. When he shows up on the corner of a methadone clinic, everything changes. Next thing you know, 20-plus people give their life to Jesus. Demons are coming out all over the place, demons of addiction and suicide and murder and all this stuff is happening. And we're about to go back because it's time for lunch. And the Holy Spirit just put this woman on my heart that I, I just felt like I was supposed to minister to. So I stayed back with my translator, and I just walked up to her, and I said, I believe the Holy Spirit is saying he's going to bring beauty from your ashes, a garment of praise. Instead of a spirit of despair. He's going to pour out his oil of gladness over your mourning. She just started to weep. This demon of grief took over her. Then all of a sudden she gets set free. She gets healed. Filled with the Holy Spirit. In love with Jesus. And she says, I actually got caught up in addiction because I lost four children. And I just couldn't take the pain. But now I have hope. Amen. This is what Jesus does. He restores all things. On our way home, we happened to run into her husband, coincidence, or the Holy Ghost. And he gave his life to Jesus. Now this whole family is following Jesus because the power of the gospel. Amen? And so he wants to delegate his authority to you. He wants you to release it in Beaver County. He wants you to release it in your workplace. He wants you to release it in your family. He wants you to release it to the outer parts of the world. And somebody say amen. amen. God has real power. I got a picture up here of a little girl named Rachel. Uh, I was in Ujiji, Tanzania, one of my first mission trips with SOS Adventure. And uh, we were in Ujiji, and this place is 99% Muslim and full of witchcraft. And so we were wrestling a demon that was trying to destroy this girl for hours. She was the first one in the tent, last one out. We stayed after the whole festival was over. It was just me and the intercessors. At the end, we finally didn't know what to do, so we just started to sing. And as we sang, and the presence of the Lord showed up in the tent, the demons all left. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so anyway, she gets free, filled with the Holy Spirit, gives her life to Jesus. Then she comes and taps me on the shoulder the next day. This is the next day. She says, I have to tell you something. Last night I went home. My grandmother is the chief witch doctor in Ujiji. And she's so deep into it that she's offered human sacrifices in our home. So I'm like, this is, this is some crazy, powerful, evil stuff, right? No wonder the wrestle was so strong. And she said, last night while I came to the festival, she got a little clay pot out and was trying to do a spell and the curse over me and over the festival. And while I was here, that pot exploded in her hand. <laughs> Tell me my God's not powerful. Tell me my God's not good. Tell me Jesus is not anointed with power. See, we just thought we were wrestling with some little girl here in the tent, but Jesus was showing off to a witch doctor across town. And when she went home, she, the, her grandmother said to her, I don't know who was praying for you, but whoever they pray to is more powerful than what I got going on here. Amen? She said, I can't, I don't know why, but I don't have any power over you anymore. But we know why, because the one who is anointed with power showed up in the tent that night, and Jesus has set her free. Amen? This is what Jesus wants to do in your life. You know, when, when we come into the hope and the realization that we can be anointed with his power, it only comes by the blood of Jesus. Amen? 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, and he died on the cross to pay for your sins. This is good news for somebody who's yet to believe. 2,000 years ago, they took Jesus, and they whipped him, and they beat him with a leather whip like this full of bone and glass and metal. And they whipped him and they beat him over and over and over again. They whipped him and brutalized him until you could not recognize Jesus. Even his own family couldn't recognize him because he was so beat up. And they took Jesus and they, they placed the crown of thorns in his brow and they beat it into his head. The Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And Jesus carried this big wooden cross for about a mile to the place of his execution. And, you know, nobody took Jesus' life from him. He laid down his life. He says, greater love is nobody than this than they lay down their life for their friends. And so Jesus, he laid down his life on the cross that day. And as he was laying down his life, he was thinking about you, the one who's yet to hear the good news of the hope of the gospel. And they took Jesus and they stretched out his hands. And they took a nail, a spike like this one. And they drove it into his hands. And then they stretched out his other hands. And they drove it into his hands. And they stretched out his feet and they nailed his feet to the cross. And then Jesus was hoisted up and he hung there. And he suffered. And he suffocated. And he died. Somebody had to die. The payment for sin is death. If you sin one time, you have to die and go to hell. Unless there is somebody to make atonement for that, to pay that price for you. Your salvation is free for you, but it costs God everything. It costs him his one and only son. I have, I have eight sons and two daughters. I can't imagine giving up their life for anybody. God had one precious begotten son, and he gave up his one and only son to die on a cross, to carry the payment for sin for you. And he hung there, and he suffered, and he suffocated, And he died. But it wasn't the nails that kept Jesus on the cross. It wasn't the soldiers that kept Jesus on the cross. It was his love for you. He was hanging there because he knew he was the only hope. He was the only way that people could come to the Father. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. So he's here today to let you know that the way that you can tap into this power source This thing that life is really all about, the spirit of the living God, is to trust only in the work of Jesus on the cross. That he died on the cross for you to pay the price for your sins. And that's good news. But the better news is this. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. Come on, somebody. On the third day, Jesus Christ came back from the dead. And because he lives, he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever comes to me will live even though he dies. Amen? So when we trust in the work of Jesus on the cross, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now the Spirit of God can come and have his dwelling in you. It's like this. When you are saved, when you, when you come into a relationship with Jesus, 
It's like this. You, you're born with a sinful body and a sinful spirit. Pretend this water had parasites. If I just took that drink, I'd be getting sick. I've had parasites. Believe me, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it makes you sick. Sin makes you sick. It makes your spirit sick. It makes your body sick. But 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came to the earth, he had a perfect body and he had a perfect spirit. Uncontaminated. In fact, his blood has cleansing power. And so when Jesus died on the cross for you and he poured out his life for you, now it's no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. And his, his blood has cleansing power and it removes all sin. And now when you walk around, you walk around holy. Well, I just sinned yesterday. Nope, you're holy in Jesus' name by his precious blood. This is the gift of salvation. But you know, there's more. There's more. Jesus doesn't only want to save you to get you to heaven. He wants you to pray, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so there's a second act of his grace where we say, I want more, Jesus. You want to give me more? Oh, you're the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire? I'm like, yes, I'm going to come and I'm going to repent and I'm going to be baptized in water to show that I'm holy. I belong to God. I'm going to heaven. I am purchased by the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen. But I want more. And when we open ourselves up to Jesus, he's the only one that can fill us with the more. Because he's the one who's anointed with power. And the one who's anointed with power will anoint you with power. And when we open ourselves up to Jesus, say, I just want a little bit more. Now, all of a sudden, we aren't just filled up, we're overflowing. Come on. Now we're not just filled up, we're overflowing. When we walk around, people get a little touch. You know what I'm saying? They walk around feeling like, oh, I'm feeling something right now because something more is going on than what meets the eye. Amen? And so when we walk around and we get touched with the anointing, when we shake somebody's hand, they get touched. When we look in somebody's eye, they feel the anointing. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Jesus wants to anoint you with power so that wherever you walk in the world, you leave a residue behind of the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you walk in the world, the love of God is contagious. Wherever you walk in the world, demons come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Right now, I have high expectation that somebody's getting healed in the room, even as the word of God goes out. The, the word of God has that power. Jesus is here to heal the sick. Jesus is here to set you free from demonic opposition that you thought were your emotions. Jesus is here to give you salvation. You have been walking in darkness, but now you have seen a great light. Jesus is here, and everything is possible in him. When we surrender ourselves to Jesus, anything is possible. Let me close with this. John chapter 14, verse 17. Jesus said this to his disciples. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives, for he lives with you and will be in you. How was he with the disciples? Because remember, Jesus was anointed and the spirit of God remained on him. And he's saying, I'm about to die on the cross and it's actually good. The temple curtain is going to tear in two from top to bottom. This four inch thick curtain, 60 feet high. And the spirit of God is going to come out and say, I no longer live in a temple built by hands. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus is coming out into the world to inhabit a people. To fill you with his power. To fill you with his presence. It says this in John chapter 20. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke this to his disciples after he died and rose again. But then he says something peculiar. Now go and wait in Jerusalem for the gift the Father promised. What's that gift? The gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 5, he says what it is. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So wait, I already have the Holy Spirit, but now I'm going to go wait for the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit. And we all know in Acts chapter 2 what happened. The Spirit of God came and lit over their heads like tongues of fire. Amen. Spiritual gifts were released. Thousands were added to the number. The church took off, and we're here today. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus anointed a small group of people with the power of the Holy Spirit. What if in 2024, Beaver County, Champion Life Church... Just a small upper room of people got touched with the anointing today. What if Jesus showed up today? I think the world would be shaken. I think generations would be changed. 
I think families would be blessed. I think that, I think that healing would break out. So today, I want to give you an opportunity. For those who are far from God, maybe you've been walking away for a while. Maybe you, maybe you never really decided to follow Jesus. You might be in church your whole life, but you know you can work in a, a soap factory your whole life. If you don't go home and take a shower, you still stink. You can be in church your whole life. If you don't, if you don't clothe yourself in the blood of Jesus and let him do his work, you still stink. So I'm here for you. If, you, if you're just a, an attender but you want to be inhabited by God, today is your day. Now is the day of salvation. The Spirit of God will come and live inside of you. And I'm also here for those who need a touch from heaven. Right now, I believe, I have high faith that Jesus is in the room. And there's nothing special about this guy, but there's something amazing about him. So I want to give you an opportunity now. If there's anybody in the band can come when, when you're ready, because we're going to spend some time just ministering. And, uh, you know, Holy Spirit can move with or without music. But we, we're going we're gonna to just allow the spirit of the living God to, to come and inhabit this place. And I just want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. And, and this is just between you and the Lord. But I want to give you an opportunity to hear from the spirit of God. You know, nobody can come to Jesus unless the Holy Spirit first draws that person to him. And then we have to be obedient and respond to the call of God on our hearts. So I want to give an opportunity for the Spirit of God to speak to you. Maybe you're in this room today and you're like, yeah, I don't know that I've ever really had the real thing. I've been walking away from God. I've been abandoning my faith. And today, I want to come back to God. Today, I want to come to Jesus for the first time. Today. I want to receive my salvation. It all comes down to trusting in the work of Jesus on the cross. Jesus is the only one that can save you. So I'm here for the one. I'm here for the one that Jesus has on his heart today. He wants you to come back home to him. He wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to surrender to him, to turn away from your sins. You have to be willing to give up everything. I'm not going to lie to you. To lay down your life. He already laid down his life for you. He wants you to lay down your life for him. To turn away from your sins. He'll give you the free gift of eternal life. Forgiveness of your sins. Peace in your heart. Peace with God. If I'm speaking to your heart today and that's your desire and you You want to have that peace with God. You want to have the power of the Holy Spirit, the cleansing power of his blood living in you. I'm going to give you an opportunity on the count of three to raise your hand. If you want to give your heart to Jesus today, your spiritual birthday, March 3rd, 2024, raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Shoot up your hand. Hallelujah. Raise them high. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. He's not ashamed of you. Lift up your hand. Come on, hold it up in faith. This is the first move of faith for you. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's here right now in the decision he's already saving you. He's already freeing you from your sins. He's already forgiving you and giving you eternal life. But I'm going to ask all of you who are making that commitment today to do something really uncomfortable. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out like an African to say, come to the front right now. Get up out of your seat. Come on, this is, the, this is the safest place you'll ever stand. And all the angels are rejoicing in heaven with you right now. Come on, get up out of your seat and come forward. I want to pray with you. I want to meet you. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Let's clap our hands, people of God. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. I know there were a couple more hands. Come on up, come on up. Welcome to the family. Hallelujah. Whether you're coming back to Jesus and getting your life right with him, you're committing your life to Jesus for the first time. I know there were a couple more hands, so I'm just going to call you one more time. Say, don't be afraid. We want to pray with you. We want to support you as a family. Nobody's judging in the house of God. Amen. We're loving here. And so if you feel comfortable, you come. But you can also pray right where you're at. So I just want to talk to the three of you because this is an important day for you. Jesus is here to save you. He's here to heal you. He's here to restore you. He's here because he he wants to inhabit you and fill you up to a place where you overflow. So if you would, just
Let's all pray together as a church. Can we do that? We'll just pray out loud together. You can just open your hands like you're receiving a gift because you are the best gift ever, eternal life. And let's all just pray out loud together. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I thank you for your love for me. I thank you that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And today, God, I surrender my life to you. I give you every part. I turn away from all my sin. And I thank you for the gift of eternal life. Put your hands on your heart for a moment. Receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I pray right now that you'd be filled up to overflow, that you'd be blessed by God, that he would anoint you with the power that you need to resist the enemy so that he flees from you, that he would give you words of life to speak over you and say you're not condemned, you're not judged, you are forgiven, you are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.